you want to sing? Okay, come on up here. You were singing pretty good a while ago. All right. Marty's got a song on her heart. Amen. Amen. All right. Watch up there. There you go. Go ahead. God is still good when the waves grow high. <laughs> God is Amen. still good all through the night. Right. When I don't know I can and I don't understand, God is still good. Clouds he sure is. Down, may darken the way. Woo. Showers of blessings may come any day. Amen. He'll bring me through and I'll stand and say, God is still good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She usually sings that song all the way to church and just about all the way home. That's the power and influence of a church. We have no idea. I was telling Kelly, uh, and she was saying, let them listen to preaching. Put some preaching on. You know who they listen to on the way to church tonight? Billy Kelly. Old-fashioned preaching. It's good for them. It's modern-day stuff. Listen, these people nowadays on some of these stations, they have a teaching ministry. And that's all right. I'm telling you, you'll never replace old-fashioned Holy Ghost, King James Bible preaching. Let them hear preaching. It's good for them. You'll learn more, listen to old-fashioned preaching in two weeks, and you will six months of a teaching ministry. Don't even use the right Bible. So let's turn the Bible to Jeremiah 42 tonight, and I want to show you a verse of Scripture. And... Uh, 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 I'll just bring out a thought here for you this evening. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Real quick, really quick to hear this evening, uh, Jeremiah. Look at these, these, all these people here in verse 1. One day, come and sing the preacher. Jeremiah, would, we would say, was in his office studying and praying. And all of a sudden, look here what happened. They came near. Verse 2, and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let we beseech thee, our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. Watch this. For we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us, that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true and faithful witness between us, if we do not even according to all the things which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good, whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Now, listen in. I want to preach tonight on the subject, there's still a few around. This story, Jeremiah, one day, is in his office. He's got books laying around here. He's studying, maybe looking on something, looking at their sermon. And all of a sudden, there come a knock at the door of the pastor. He opened it up, and there stood several of his church members. Now, any pastor, I don't think anybody in here has ever pastored, but Brother Derek, uh, any pastor can tell you when you're in your office on Sunday or any other time, and all of a sudden, a door, somebody knocks on your door, and you open it up, and there are several of your men, your heart just sinks, and your knots start coming up in your stomach. You think, oh no, now what? Nobody, you know why most preachers are gun shy? Because People save up all their bad things and all their gripes and everything, and as soon as he walks in the door, start hitting with that, hitting with that. I hope you would have better sense, because you do, you do know if you do that, you affect the mood of the entire service after that. If you got something terrible to tell me, at least wait till Sunday night and then ruin my day. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, anyway, they came knocked on the door. 
He said, yes, sir. How y'all doing? They said, preacher, we don't talk to you. He said, oh, gosh. When somebody says that, they're quitting. They feel led to go somewhere else. Translated, we're mad and got our feelings hurt, so we're going to get somebody else we can fool for a while. Or we're, we're, we're there, or we don't like what you did. Or we don't like that. That's what all that means. Preacher, we'd like to talk to you. He says, oh, no. Oh, no. I done been hit three times this month. Please, Lord, not another one. Please, Lord, don't tell me another family's breaking up. Don't tell me somebody else is mad and got their feelings hurt and quitting. So he says, just a second, y'all. Can you give me just a second? He goes in there, gets down on his knees, says, oh, God, please. Oh, God, please give me grace. God, please. Lord, you know that deacon's wife standing there, that old sister flapper jaws over there. Lord, if she says one more word to me, I'm going to slap her, Lord. I know I ain't right. And God, I know that's mean, but God, you're going to have to help me like that woman. Like that. That's what he prayed. I heard him. <laughs> and, and, uh, he, and, and he comes back to the door and he texts his wife and said, Pray they're here. And he comes back. And they said, All right, come on in, y'all. They sat down around the office. He said, What's on your mind, y'all? God help me. God help me to give me grace. God give me grace to take this. I know I'm going to get hit. And they say, Preacher, we've been talking. And we want you to tell us what God wants us to do. And we'll do it. He said, huh? <laughs> they said, preacher, it don't matter what it is. It don't matter what capacity it is, what job in the church. You tell us what God wants us to do, and we're ready to do it. He says, he starts pinching himself. You know, I've been pastor nearly 40 years and I ain't never had a group of people come and knock on my door saying, we'd like to do more for the church. Never. It's always we're mad about something. We're upset about something. And I know stuff happens, but I ain't never had a, I've had an individual, but you never have a group of people say, you just tell us whatever God says, preacher, and we're ready to do it. Bless God, let's get on with this thing. He said, you're kidding they said, now, there ain't many of us. We are but a few, but we're ready to do what God wants us. You talk about a church that could get something done. You get a bunch of people with an attitude like that. You get a bunch of people together to say, hey, we're all going to be friends. We're all going to like each other. We ain't going to be mad and fuss and fight and get mad at this one, get mad at that. We're going to get along and preach her. You tell us what God wants us to do and we'll do it. Listen, the devil can't stop a church like that. The devil can't stop the church from outside, people. It's the devil gets in the church. That's how the devil gets, that stops the work of God. So I want to preach on, there's still a few around. Ain't many, but thank God there's a few. Three or four things, and then we'll go. You know them already. Number one, there's still a few around that love the book. There's still a few around that love the book. Those ladies from California told me not long ago, they said, you know the difference in here and the churches in California? I said, no, what is it? She said, you people here, you major on the Bible. It's the Bible, the Bible, the preaching. She said, when we go to church in California, it's 45 minutes of singing and swaying and drums and dancing around and then a 15-minute little sermon, get that out of the way, and then we come back and do it again next time. She said, you major on the Bible. Listen, there's still a few around that love the book. The right way to build a church is by preaching this book right here. I'm not jealous of singing. I love singing. I love it. I wish we had more better. Uh, I'm telling you. But I'm ladies and gentlemen, but I'm glad there's still a few around that love the book. I, people tell me all the time, they write us letters, they, they call me and they'll say, Preacher, I just like to sit down and listen to somebody preach. Isn't it a blessing once in a while just to hear a man get up and open that book and brother just let her rip? Not worried about so-and-so, who's, who's here, who ain't here, uh, what's going to happen, what ain't going to happen, but just right back, take that old 1611 black back 66 and just let the chips fall where they will and shell the corn. You're not going to improve on that. Now, uh, they're, they're, uh, we're losing those days. We're losing those kind of churches, preachers, and we're losing those days. The, uh, there are left-wing liberals who, if they had their way, would shut us down from preaching what we believe. Don't you sit there and say, ah, oh, they believe in free speech. They believe in their free speech as long as you agree with them. 
And I'm telling you, there's liberals tonight that would shut this place down if they could do it and get away with it. They'd have me fixed to where I could never preach another sermon, cut my tongue out, put me in jail, do whatever, shut me up from preaching what this Bible said. They're already saying the Bible is hate literature because it talks about uh, homosexuals and adulterers and murder and, and transgender and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the Bible don't even talk about transgender. It, it took it for granted nobody's that messed up. And, but I'm going to tell you, for ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad there's still a few around that read and love the book. I'm glad there's still a few around that love the book. We still believe in the old-fashioned Bible, the 1611 King James Bible. You say, now, Brother Danny, I listen to so-and-so every day. You better be careful who you listen to on radio and on TV because you know they're wrong, but you say, they say a lot of good things. They say a lot of good things. And the next thing you know, you'll be listening to them not-so-good things that they're saying. Now, I do listen to some of them, but I limit myself of listening to people who are wrong on their doctrine, who are wrong on their on their on their uh, on their Bible. If they don't even know the right Bible to preach and read, then uh, that means that the spirit's off in them somewhere, somehow. Now, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be ugly tonight, but you don't want to listen to a Bible preached that says that Joseph was Jesus' father in Luke two thirty three. That is a denial of the virgin birth, the fundamentals of the faith. That's not just these and thous. That's taking out the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want a Bible that leaves the plan of salvation out in Acts 8.37. No, sir. I don't care how talented. I don't care how pretty she is and she can go down and have a woman's... I don't care. I don't want to listen to a Bible that don't even have Acts 8.37 in it and brother takes out 1 John 5.7 and denies the Trinity and disturbs the major doctrines of the Christian faith, I'm glad there's still a few that love this book and say, I want it straight. Give it to me straight, preacher. Say amen right there. Amen. amen. Lord, in mercy. I, 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 there's churches I ain't going to get off on singing tonight, uh, but there's a lot of churches where you go during the song service, you think, where am I? Is this church? It sounds like you're in a honky-tonk somewhere. I've had to sit there and pray, Lord, will you get the devil out of here before I get up to preach? I have, really. I'm trying to say, Lord, and a church, you can tell a lot about a church because they start getting off on their music more and more and more. That's another thing those ladies in California said. They said, your music here is so much different than ours. I said, yeah, it sure is. It sure is. But I'm glad there's still a few around that love the book. Number two, I'm glad there's still a few around that long for revival. I'm glad there's still a few around that long for revival. I'm glad there's some people that's not satisfied with the way things are. I'm glad there's still a few around. There ain't many, but there's still a few. I meet them here and yonder when I travel, and I meet people that say, Preacher, we meet every Saturday night, and we pray that God would send revival. Hallelujah. Thank God. I meet them and say, Preacher, I got a place I go up in the woods or me and some of the ladies in the church, we meet and we just pray God send revival. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, brother, ladies and gentlemen, that is the answer for our homes. That is the answer for our churches. That is the answer for our nation. We need to pray God will put, put uh, prayer back in the White House until he puts prayer back in the church house. We had to ever get it in the church. We might get it in the schoolhouse, the White House. I'm telling you, I'm glad there's still a few around that long for revival. The other night, uh, uh, we was in Gatlinburg, and these people come up to me. I didn't know them uh, from Adam. And they come up to me and say, said, hey, Danny. And then they told me who they was. And they was from Robbinsville, North Carolina. You've heard me tell about the big revival we had over there. And they remembered me. And uh, I said, well, hey there. How y'all doing? Then when the man come over, I did remember him. I did remember the man. We started talking to him there a little bit. And it brought back memories of that revival. It brought back memories of that first night that I went over yonder in that cold, rainy November evening. And I 
I went over there that night and I was I stopped and bowed my head at a service station. I was so tired and I was crying and I was late and it was rain hitting on the windshield and I thought, Lord, I can't preach. I don't even need to be preaching. I met the preacher. He took me in a little old motel room. Uh, it wasn't even as big as my office over there this that this evening. I, I laid down a little bit and changed clothes. He said, I'll be back in a few minutes and you can follow me to the church. We wound around up the side of that mountain, going up like this, looked like a snake went up through there and they made the road behind it and they come through like that and pull in a little old bitty church parking lot called Cedar Cliff. That was a good name for it, Cedar Cliff Baptist Church, sitting up there and I thought, there ain't going to be nobody here and I thought, well, dang, I can't preach no way. I was going through a very, 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 very hard time. My heart was broke. I was crying. I, I was, have you ever got to the place where you have these weird thoughts? You think, I don't even know. How do you know, you know there is a God? I don't know if I'm saying. You know, you think crazy thoughts like that. When you're really down, the devil gets you down, puts his foot on you. That's the way I was feeling. And I sat over there that night. That crowd come in there. I couldn't believe there's that many people. And I was sitting over there like this. And I was sitting over there thinking, I don't need to be preaching. I ain't got no business preaching. I got up that night. They said, Danny Castle's here to preach tonight. I stood over there. I opened my Bible. And I, by faith, done the best I could. I said, God. God, you're going to have to help me if, you, if there is a God. I don't even know if I'm saved, but I'm going to do the best I can. And I said, you ought to be faithful. You ought to serve God. You ought to do the best you can. That night I gave the invitation, and the song leader of that church hit the altar. He was an old boy about about early 40s, and he hit the old big old lanky boy. He got down and he prayed. Mama prayed. He got up. He said, <laughs> He said, I've, I've raised my kids wrong. He said, i got a boy down there in that gym playing basketball tonight. And he said, I ain't raised him right. I ain't raised him to be faithful to church. I've raised him to be, he's down there playing ball. He said, I'm going to go get my family and we're going to get them in here. And, uh, uh, and I thought, well, wow, what about that? And I still thought, this ain't nothing. There ain't nothing going to happen here. I'm up here in the middle of nowhere. Little bitty 1A school. They won the state championship in football about three or four years in a row. Rough bunch of old redneck boys. And uh, uh, the, the Robbinsville Black Knights, you've probably heard of them. I mean, tremendous, still are, big football players. And uh, uh, I sat down there that night, and he said that. He went home that night, and his son's name was Michael. And Michael was 14 years old, only in the ninth grade, and he's already dunk a basketball. He's about 6'3". He stood about there as skinny as a rail. He looked like that microphone stand right there. He had to tease a hair on his leg to get his socks stand up. I mean, this boy, he had to run around around in the shower to get wet. That's how skinny he was. So he could jump high. Yeah. And so he'd take the ball like that and he could dunk it already. And he's on the JV team. His daddy went home that night, and he said, We're going to church tomorrow night. And we're going, he said, no, Daddy, no. The varsity's got a game, and I want to go to it tomorrow night. He said, you're going to church tomorrow night. We're going to serve God around here from now on. God's first. Well, we come back that night. He marched old Michael in there. I didn't know none of this. They told me later. I got up, and I tried to preach again. And there sat Michael back there. And Michael sat about halfway back, and I got up and preached that night. And lo and behold, I gave the invitation. Here he come down the altar and got saved, 14 years old. And his daddy was hugging him. Grandma went, Woo! I can't. And you know what? I felt a little something way, way down in here. I thought, well, maybe there is still a God. Amen. Maybe God is still. You ever been like that, you know? You're just dry, and boy, you think God does it. Then God does something for you, and I said... Hey man, hallelujah. Well, the next night, he brought some of his friends. They all got saved. On Thursday night, I was going to preach on rock music. They brought cheerleaders. They brought the, the ball players. They crowded in there. They had on their school jackets. And they all got saved. And the next night, a bunch more. Then they started getting in trouble at school. And the coach, this is a public school, the coach told them, he said, if you boys don't quit laying out of practice, I'm kicking you off the team. And some of the parents went down there and talked to the coach. And they said, I'm going to tell you something. Our boys is getting right with God. That, that's more important. That we want them to play ball, but this is more important. And the coach said, all right, anybody that wants to go to that revival is excused from basketball practice. That's the truth in a public school, buddy. And their teachers was crying. And the kids was witnessing to their parents. And long story short, 21 nights later, we had 75 get saved. They was called to preach. 
Two of them we met the other night. There's one with pastoring, and his friend was pastoring, and churches right now started come out of that revival meeting. I'm telling you tonight, I felt less like it than ever. But that's when God can use you when you're empty, when you don't fool yourself, when you don't think you can do nothing. That's when He can come in and fill you and use you. I'm telling you, I'm glad there's still a few around that want revival. That thing's still going. To this day, we met them over there the other night. Hallelujah. They asked one time, Dale Moody was in his prime. And they said, uh, somebody asked, they said, we're going to have a revival. They said, let's get D.L. Moody, because God was blessing D.L. Moody. And they said, D.L. Moody don't have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit. We don't have to have him. And you know what they said? They said, no, but the Holy Spirit's got a monopoly on D.L. Moody. That's the man you want right there. You want a man that the Holy Ghost has a monopoly on. Amen. I'm just about to feel good in my soul tonight, y'all. I'm telling you, I know this is, I, uh, this is P.A.D., Pastor Appreciation Day, and I appreciate my church. I appreciate my Bible. I appreciate the Lord. I'm glad He's still on the throne. I'm glad He's still real. I'm glad He's still up there tonight, ain't you? Still a few around. Number three, there's still a few around that like the glory. Ain't many. There's not many that even knows what the glory is. You know, old Joey got up there and shouted around here a little bit this morning. You sit there and say, oh, oh, he's an embarrassment. Uh, the truth probably is you're an embarrassment to God. The God, when you walk in, the Lord probably tells the angels, he's an embarrassment. She's an embarrassment. He, old Joey's up there. He's praising God from his heart, y'all. Amen. That's good. That's good. We ought to meet and praise God. Now, I don't think everybody has to run around and scream and holler like I do. You don't have to be a extrovert like me. I, I know that. You, I'm shy, really. You don't believe that, do you? Uh, I really am. I, when I took, uh, uh, we had a class in school. What do you call it? Public speaking or whatever. What do you call that class? It was, I hated it. We were supposed to give a speech, and I would not. I said, I ain't getting up there. I can't talk in front of people. I can play ball. I can play music. In front of, but I didn't like to talk in front of people. Can you believe that? You don't believe that, do you? Uh, you just do not believe. You, I, people say, Brother Danny, you just look like you're so at home, and, and I am. When I'm, I mean, I, I'm not. But, I, but naturally, I don't like to get up in front of a crowd of people and talk. I just don't. I, I just don't. But I'm telling you one thing, boy. When you start believing the Lord, you start getting a blessing. You, heaven gets real. I mean, heaven comes down on you a time or two. You, you don't care if you're in front of people. You don't even know there's anybody else there. I've been in church a few times when I thought, hey, wasn't nobody there but me and the Lord. And that's when it gets good. I'm glad there's still a few around that lack the glory. I, you've heard me tell over and over and over. I used to preach. I wouldn't take nothing for my education. Nothing. I wouldn't trade my education for anything this world's got to offer. Son, I've learned. I've been through school of hard knocks, y'all. Good things, bad things, and everything in between. And I used to preach well up in Mountain Spruce Pines and, and Burnsville, Avery County, Mitchell County, all the time when I was just in my early 20s. And I would sit there, and there'd go to these little old churches, and these old men would stand up there, and they'd wear overalls and a white shirt. You know, way back in the mountains in them days, that's as dressed up as you can get. Overalls and a pressed white shirt. And buddy, them old guys stand up there. It's how I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And I, and I would sit there and I'd think, you know what? These people got it made. They live, I, I, they'd take me home to eat with them. And they'd live up there on a big old hill. Them, what they make them rock out of spruce pine, they're sort of orange. They're like that sort of, but they're more orange. They're real. And them houses, they used to make them rock. There's a lot of them up there in the mountains like that. You'd have an old boy, him and his wife, and two or three kids, great big old yard and a farm, and they'd done got their house paid for. Grandma, they fix fried chicken on Sunday evening, and everybody just laughed, and the kids playing out in the yard and having a good time. And I thought, you know what? These people got it made. And I went to Flint, Michigan, and it was just streets and drugs and killing and fights and murder. And I start, I begin to think, you know what? This world's got it all backwards. They think Hollywood and money and drugs and sin will make you happy. 
About that time, the second verse of that song, the door had opened over here, and there'd be a little old woman come out, looked like Miss Edwards that was here the other night, and about ten right behind her. They'd been in the prayer room. It'd be ten after seven. They'd been there getting a hold of God, and they'd come out, Woo! Woo! I mean, the kids would go like this. You could tell the Lord entered into the room. And they'd pile in that front row of that choir and they'd look up with a shine on their face. You can't fake. You can't fake that. It's you, it's you, you either got it or you ain't. And they'd start singing and I'm telling you, cold chills would go down my back. And I'd say, now these people got old time religion. And this is where my mom got it. And that's where Billy Kelly got it. And Jack, I, all them preachers that had the great churches up north got the good old dose of Holy Ghost religion somewhere down south nine times out of ten. Thank God for the Bible Belt. Thank God for these mountains and mountain preachers and old-time preaching and power of God and prayers being answered. Thank God your kids can grow up knowing that God's still real. God's not some kind of hip-hop hippie sitting up there in heaven where we say, Jesus is all right. Jesus is all right. Je oh, just shut up. Please. You're getting on our nerves. He's God and He's worship. You don't have to make God cool so kids will like Him. You show them the real thing, buddy. They'll get a hold of that. That'll do them right. Amen. Amen. Hey, no generation. Listen, when I got saved, we didn't say our music and the old people's music. I get so aggravated when all these churches say, well, we have a traditional service at 8. That's for all the old people that want the real old-time singing. And then we have a contemporary service at 10 and then bring in the rock and roll and all the kids, you know, and dim the lights and smoke coming out of the altar and all that. That's a bunch of junk, brother. When people get right with God, if they're 8 or 80, they all act like, like Marty up here a while ago. Amen? Amen? God is still good! God is still good! God is still good when the storms are raging. You get your heart right, you don't have to have hip-hop and rock and roll. We don't have to have hip-hop for people to like it. Amen? Jay-Z or Beyonce or anybody like that. Next, I'll hurry and I'm through. I'm glad there's still a few around that labor for souls. That labor for souls. Give their lives on a mission field. Like Cecily going out. I appreciate, I appreciate a young lady that wants to be a missionary. Give her, that's smart. That's better than saying, I'm going to go to Hollywood and live and get me a job and making a lot of money. Lord have mercy, people. I'm glad there's still a few around that will labor for souls. I appreciate our bus workers. I appreciate y'all. But it ain't easy uh, on that bus every Sunday morning. It's cold weather coming up. Them drivers go out there and them old things won't crank. And I, You know what? We had one tire up this morning. Huh? But listen, I'm telling you, you know why the devil fights that bus ministry so much? Uh, he hates, he absolutely hates those little boys and girls getting off that bus coming in here learning about God. Like, like Molly is up here a while ago and all these other kids. Listen, that's people that labor for soul. You ought to thank God you go to a church that we still labor for souls. You ought to thank God for it. Last I'm through, I'm saying this and I'm done. I'm glad there's still a few around that look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. You ain't got one problem that wouldn't be settled and couldn't be settled in 15 seconds if the Lord came tonight. Look for Jesus. There's a lot of them telling us we can't look for the Lord. There's a lot of them saying, well, Jesus couldn't come back today. He can't come back to the middle or the end of the tribulation. He, so in other words, you're saying he couldn't come today. That ain't right. That ain't right. The apostles were looking for him in their day. Sure was. And I'm going to tell you tonight, the way to, way to live your life is look for him. You say, I'm having a hard preacher. Just think, the Lord might come today. That makes it a little easier. Amen. Say, I'm having, I hate school. The Lord might come today. Well, I don't like my job, but the Lord might come today. I'm just looking for him. He just, you know, they used to have this old thing on the Three Stooges or something. Uh, you remember, you kids are, got, didn't get to see none of that, but it's on Little Rascals, Three Stooges. One, this guy goes down the street in New York, and all the men wore hats back in them days, back in the 30s and 40s, and he'd tell you how, and he'd stand there on the corner and look up like this. 
And of course, I mean, you try it. Somebody come down there and turn around. They look up. And the next person come down. They look up. Wait, wait a minute. He'd have he'd have a fifty, seventy-five people sitting around there. Looking up. And everybody said, "Why y'all looking? We're not nothing." We used to do that in school. Um, I had this teacher. This is awful. I'm sorry. I wasn't saved. I wasn't really mean in school. I just was bored. And uh, I had a teacher in 11th grade. I think it's 10th grade. He was our guidance counselor. Do they still have guidance counselors at school, Brother Mike? I, I, when he came, I thought, what's that? He don't have a job. What does he do? Sitting there and talk to people, having trouble and stuff. And uh, we immediately took advantage of this guy. He had been to college and got a degree, but I'm telling you, that was that, that guy was dumb. And And we... We would play tricks on him. He would say, now class, we, when somebody's out, he'd fill in for him. He'd say, and we loved it. I, I guess it's all right for me to say his name. He's probably been dead and gone a long time. His name is Mr. Long. Long. And, uh, and I'd, say, Mr. Uh, I'd say, Mr. Long, can I go to the bathroom? Mr. Long, can I take the trash out? Mr. Long, can I clean the board? You need me to do anything? And he'd like, he'd just whatever you said, he would do it. And we thought, this guy's crazy, man. He's a pushover. Uh, remember that, you know, kids will push you as far as you'll let them push you, and they'll run over you if you let them. It, ain't, it don't hurt to stand up to them a little bit. And he, he said, now, class, I'm going to go down here a minute. And uh, he would go down, down the hall. I'd say this, but I said, all right, everybody, let's do this. When he, and we, we, we was doing these, uh, these Indian beats, like boom, 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 boom. boom. Boom, boom, boom. And everybody in the room was doing it on their desk. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh. And you could hear it down the hall. And about that time, somebody would say, here he comes. And when he'd sit in that room, everybody was quiet, just like he was right here. That's awful. We used to do that to him and just die laughing when he'd get. And one day, somebody in the class had this bright idea. Some little brat said, hey, I know what let's do. Let's all be looking up when he comes in. I said, and somebody said, well, here he comes. Everybody in the class was just looking straight up when he walked into the class. <laughs> and he walked in. He walked in. We was all just doing like that. And I was sort of cut my eyes looking at him. And he walked in. He said, now, class, now, class, I know what you're doing. It's that old looking up in the eye. I know that gag. <laughs> and he, he started looking up. And we were cracking up. We said, we got him to look up. I fell for it. And you know what? You can't hardly help it. You can't hardly help it. Everybody in here just start looking up all of a sudden. Go ahead. Just start look, look up something like that. You're on video. You're on. Uh, uh, and if somebody, else, if somebody came in here and we was all looking up, you know, they're going to say, what are y'all looking at? And that's what it is looking for the Lord. Looking for the Lord. Look for the Lord, man. Say, what are you doing? Why, why are you so happy about the oh, Lord might come today. First thing you know, they'll start looking for the Lord. They'll start looking for the Lord. It's catching. It spreads. Amen? We'll try that at Christmas. Let's try that at Christmas. You get a guitar, we'll go out there and stand in front of Walmart and sing Silent Night and look up like that right there. Amen? I'm glad there's still a few that are looking for Jesus. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Amen.